first thing would be the ability to build a strong relationship with each child. Get to know exactly what motivates, inspires and distracts them. An example and possibly one of the best bits of teaching I've witnessed was I was observing a lesson. There was a girl, lots of low level disruption, chatting away and the teacher was able to stop that with a glance here and there. But then about halfway through the lesson, she went over to the girl when the rest of the class were doing a group activity. And she looked into the girl's eyes and said, you know, Sarah, when I look at you, I see a girl with so much potential. You're going to achieve great things. But today your choice of behaviour isn't helping either of us. Come on, let's get on with this. Later, I asked the teacher about this and she said she'd been waiting for about two years to share th this intervention because she'd got to know the girl and she was waiting for exactly the right moment to, to intervene, the right thing to say. And it had a powerful positive impact on their relationship and the performance of the girl. And this is the sort of thing that we don't often see in a, you know, an Ofsted inspector might not see the, how powerful and how important the build up to these kinds of interventions are. It's the strong relationship that's at the core of the, the enhancement of performance in the child. And time and time again, I say that it's more about the relationships and less about the lesson plans themselves that have the most powerful impact. So the first, possibly the most important thing, building strong relationships. That's what I, the first thing I borrow from the best teachers in the world. Secondly, I've noticed that the best teachers become the best teacher they can be. They apply the best of their own strengths, their, their own skills, their own personalities. They don't try and directly copy other teachers. They, they develop the qualities that they're meant to, to use to shine in the classroom. So researchers such as Martin Seligman have looked through history and looked at what are the qualities that we admire in human beings. And here are some of the top ones. And I would encourage you to think about how would you like the children you teach to remember you? Which of these qualities do you model? How would you like them to remember you? The more that you develop these and model these qualities, the, the better the classroom experience and educational experience is for everyone. The third thing I would say, I've noticed about brilliant teachers is that they look after themselves as well as their, the children they teach. They eat, drink and exercise well. They have friends and interests outside of teaching. They don't become consumed only by teaching. Yes, they're brilliant teachers, but they're also aiming to be brilliant partners, parents, friends, colleagues. In, in my research, I've witnessed and I now share around 30 things that great teachers do. The three I've shared with you this now are a br brilliant places to start and they will help you become a better person as well as a better teacher. Thank you for listening and hopefully our paths, paths will cross sometime in the future.